so it happened. We're in New York now. It was a really sad experience to leave Hastings behind because we really, really love Hastings. I really enjoy this city. It was a place I was not planning to know. <laughs> we just moved there almost by chance uh, in, a, in a pretty random way. And it, it's a place we love dearly. And I, I really, for a while, really thought I would stay there. Um, but then this opportunity to move here to New York appeared and we just, it was, it was foolish not to follow it. So here we are. Um, it's not the first time we move out of countries. As you know, I'm from Chile. Uh, we moved to Germany first, uh, to Cologne, then we moved to Berlin, then we moved to uh, London, then to Hastings, now to New York. So there's, there's this constant feeling of uh, being on the move. I mean, right now we're gonna stay here and hopefully stay for a longer time, hopefully at least six or seven years. So that's that's the plan. Every time you move from one house to the other, it's kind of rough, but moving from one country to the other is way more extreme. Uh, and not only in terms of emotionally and leaving your friends behind or the things that you're accustomed to, it's also really uh, intense on, for us at least, people who collect cameras or are interested in uh, film cameras, especially. It's hard to leave some of your stuff behind or start selling some of your stuff because it's stuff that takes a while to find, collect, or uh, I, I don't consider myself a camera collector, but I do consider myself someone who enjoys using certain cameras and finding the right tool for the right job and whatnot. Um, so it was hard to let some of that stuff go. And in the process of letting some of the cameras go and just downsizing everything, I had to put all the cameras that I own into one uh, bag, one carry-on bag. It was an extreme task, but it was doable. So all the cameras, all the filters, all the chargers, because I still have the Leica M8, which is digital and it needs batteries. I still have this, which is the uh, Canon EOS M and the, I have a small monitor over there. So those two also need batteries and chargers. Um, all of that needed to be fit into one single bag. And I, I, it, was, it was an extreme task to make. And also, I had to sell some other cameras. And for example, I had to sell my uh, scanners. The Packon scanner had to go. Uh, I had to leave the Epson scanner behind. So it's, it's like starting all over again in, in those regards. And because of that, I had to let go one of the cameras that I recently made a video of, which was the Mamiya C330. It's a camera that I, I love dearly and I, I tried for the first time when I was in London and I loved it so much that I made a whole project with it and then I took it to Tokyo and I shoot another whole project with it um, or almost a whole project with it and it's, it's, a, it's a camera that I really love but I had to sell it and I ended up keeping the Rolleiflex 2.8e and this is something that I wanted to talk about because I recently made a video about the Mamiya C330 versus the Rolleiflex 2.8e uh, and I stand by everything I said the Mamiya is easier to focus it's it's got a better screen it's the the, the focusing system is quicker uh, it can focus to shorter distances and whatnot but I ended up keeping this one for a few reasons which I think are very important reasons. One of the reasons why I chose the Rolleiflex over the Mamiya is the size. This camera is, I mean, it's it's way smaller than the Mamiya, that's for sure. Uh, it's also a little bit lighter. I talked about this in the review. But here's the other thing. I had a lot of fun using this camera. I love TLRs in general, or at least the two TLRs that I've had, which were the, the Mamiya and this one. The Mamiya is an amazing camera. It was, it was really fun to shoot, but it was on the big side and it was a bit cumbersome. And even though the Mamiya had these amazing images, I can get more or less the same pictures with the Rolleiflex in a small package. So that's a big deal for me, especially now that I'm moving, especially now that I'm just constantly trying to downsize all my equipment. I, I think it's a, it was a tough decision, but it was the right decision. I grabbed the Rolleiflex and I started taking pictures around Hastings about a month before we moved because I needed to make an informed decision. So by the time I made the video, uh, the comparison video, I've already shot a bunch of rolls, but then I kept going. Um, I shot a lot of black and white HP5+, Plus. I shot a lot of that, and I also shot a lot of uh, Ektachrome 64 and Velvia 50. I went to Berlin and I only brought the Rolleiflex in as, as a TLR instead of the Mamiya because I wanted to really give it a try and see if I can get accustomed to it. Because if I can get accustomed to this um, and stop using the Mamiya, then I, can, I could just sell the Mamiya. And I discovered something that should have been obvious from the start, but uh, it wasn't as obvious to me. Here's the thing. I always think about 
when, when I have a camera, I always think about the options that I have. Uh, and it's, I, I, I'm pretty sure some of you might be able to um, see yourself reflected in this. When I have a camera, I think about not only what it has, but the potentials of what I can eventually do with the camera. And the Mamiya C330 has the potential of interchangeable lenses. So you can use the 80 millimeter and then if you don't feel like it, you can change to 105 uh, or so. Um, you can switch and, 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 and use other lenses. The issue is I had two lenses. I had the 80 millimeter and I, I had the 135, 105, I don't even remember. And, and the reason why I don't even remember is because I tried only once and I didn't like it. It was, it felt like, um, it felt like a cumbersome 80 millimeter on 35 millimeters. Uh, and I just, I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it and I never used it again. I used it for half of one roll and that was it. I didn't even want to get accustomed to it. It was just not my thing. And at the end of the day, I was like, yeah, this camera has interchangeable lenses. I can use other lenses. I never used any of all of those lenses. I, I never purchased a 50 millimeter, for example, which acts roughly like a 35 millimeter. I never purchased that. I could have and have like a really nice camera with a 35 millimeter uh, TLR, but I never did it. And the reason why I never did it is because I enjoy the 80 millimeter. The 80 millimeter 2.8 is the lens uh, that I enjoy when shooting medium format, especially on TLRs. I just, that's my lens. So if that's the lens I enjoy, why would I treasure so much the fact of having more options if I'm not really using them? So I kept the Rolleiflex and I've been shooting a lot with it and I really enjoy this camera. That's, that's the other thing. I have fun using this camera. I go outside and I just enjoy using it. It's easy to use. It's comfortable. The controls are all on top. So it's really easy to carry around. It's really easy to set up. It has a light meter, which sometimes works perfectly. And sometimes it's a little bit off. So I'm always rechecking with an external light meter on my phone. Um, but in general, it's a great camera and I just enjoy using it. And yeah, it's, it, it has slowly become my main companion. Whenever I go out, I have been shooting almost exclusively with it for a month and something. Um, and I just feel great. I, I've discovered also that medium format is the format that I enjoy the most. I shoot a lot of 35 millimeter because um, it's the most common uh, format, but I enjoy medium format a lot. I, I would say a lot more than 35 millimeter. The, the bigger negative is just, it makes a big difference. It gets, you know, I'm not a sucker for details and sharpness, but in medium format, it really, it, the, the difference is really noticeable. So. Uh, whenever I take a picture now with, with a 35 millimeter camera and I see the negative, I'm like, yeah, it's nice, but it's not as nice as medium format, uh, which is a, it's, it's a, it's a scary thought because then what, what happens next? It's like four by five, the next step. I don't know. Um, at least regarding the, the type of images that I like to craft and that I enjoy taking medium format, it's, uh, TLRs and specifically this camera, the Rolleiflex 2.8e is uh, fulfilling all the needs that I have. So right now I'm enjoying it. Aside from the cameras and some film that I brought on my backpack, I have nothing in here. So I don't have scanners. I don't have uh, uh, film developing things. I don't have like any space to make like a dark room. I have nothing. So I have to start all over again. This might take a while. Uh, I'm, I hope I can post a video shooting some film next week, but I am, to be honest, I'm not sure that'll be doable. So I might do a review next week and then from the subsequent week onwards, I might start shooting film again. I'm sorry for this delay, but you know, that's what happens when you have to sell everything you have and start anew. It's hard to create content right away. So I hope you can understand. Um, and yeah, that's been my experience switching from the Mamiya to the Rolleiflex. And it has to do with selling, downsizing, choosing what you want, why you use it. I don't know, it's been, a, it's been a weird ride. I was not expecting this, to be honest. I was expecting to use the Rolleiflex for a while and then decide it was not for me and just sell it, cash in the money and use it for something else, but it was not the case. I sold the Mamiya to one of my patrons, so that has me excited and happy, so it will find a nice home and it will be taken care of, so that's good. I'm, I'm really happy about that. Also, before I leave, I wanna give a big shout to my patrons because they're funding the channel and they help me tremendously, so thanks to them, I can uh, repurchase everything that I need to start all over and just start uh, developing film and scanning it and whatnot, so thanks a lot, patrons. If you want to buy a scene uh, with images that I've taken with the oh man it got really dark 
All right, that's better. In case you want to purchase a scene with the images I took with the Miya C330 in, in Tokyo and in Hastings, I have two scenes. One is called Several Hours Ahead and the other one is called A Period of Strangers. They're both for sale on my Etsy shop. So just follow the link in the description and there you can find the scenes. And yeah, they'll be shipped from the UK to where you are directly. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed them. Thanks a lot for sticking by and I will see you next week with another episode. And until then, just keep shooting, guys.